Hey there, Tech Guru here. Today's episode is a bit different. Do you remember arcade machines? Those big cabinets you'd find in an arcade with tons of games that would steal your quarters? Well, nowadays it's quite popular to have an arcade machine at home if you have the space or money for it. Well, what if I told you that an actual friend of mine has designed a really cool arcade machine that doesn't take up too much space, looks great and is meant to be mounted on a wall. Today, we're gonna review Cadebox, a creation of my friend Kyle, which is an arcade machine capable of playing arcade games and also much more. Kyle has graciously invited me into his home and so using some movie magic, let's go there. Here I am folks, movie magic. I am at Kyle's house and this is the cage box, the arcade machine designed by Kyle. Okay, so this is Kyle Drago. We go back quite a way. I think I've known you for 10, yeah. 10 years, I think, I now think so, yeah. probably. And this is his creation, the cage box. Um, so I'm gonna start asking the very most simple question. Why did you make this? Why? Yeah. Um, basically, we had uh, a large arcade box, so I always wanted an arcade box. And we got the retro looking arcade box for my apartment. We basically placed it here mm -hmm. and we saw that it was a little bit too bulky. It didn't go too much with the, with the apartment and with our style. Also, the colors were of Super Mario, so it was a Super Mario design. It had a lot of blue and you know. So, um, basically then, we, uh, we sold it and we started thinking of how we can do something even better, better for us and something what we wanted. So, um, my wife, she is a, she's an architect. She helped me with the 3D. Ah, that, that might have come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> she helped me with the 3D um, designs. We did uh, some cool designs. Um, there was a lot of different designs, but at the end, obviously, um, we came up with this. We wanted something which was wall mounted, which okay. is important because of the limiting foot space that we have in an apartment. And um, so we did it wall mounted. Um, at first, I have an LED, uh, an LED uh, and the light TV mm -hmm. and the inspiration came from there. So I wanted to do this with LED backlit. Okay. okay. But, and then since the logo came out to be so cool, um, which is by the way my name, Kyle, K-H-A-I-L, because it's not the usual K-Y-L-E, um, Kyle plus arcade plus box that made up. Uh, so that's pretty smart. So I have K-H for Kyle, because he's K-H-A-I-L, yeah. and then A for obviously arcade, and box, because well, it is <laughs> a very nice, but box. Okay, exactly. so that's pretty cool. And this is fully uh, customizable, The as in the, the colors, you can change the colors, right? Yes, yes, okay. yes. So you yeah, go ahead and, yeah, go ahead and show me that. I'll, 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 one second. The remote somewhere. Yes, yes, yeah, there is. Okay, there's the remote here. So you can um, do some special effects, for example, yeah, so there you go. all the colors. Yeah, that's pretty cool. If I want to do gold, I can do it gold, so it's so it matches gold. The, okay. It matches there. All right, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, you can do a strobing effect, so there are many different many different colors and effects. Okay. I, my, my favorite is this one, the strobing effect, because it's like more calm. Yeah, calm. very smooth. Yeah, dead, actually, so. let's use this, the fade one. Which okay. Is also very good. Yeah. So let's um, let's talk a little bit about the machine itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, you have two joystick controllers here, yeah? and then you have six buttons on each side. So it's a typical two-player arcade box configuration. Yes. yes. Uh, then you can use these buttons here. I assume four player one and if it's a two player game you can come in okay usually when it's an arcade for example you remember you start playing as player one and then you can um, insert a coin and and play okay. as player two okay now instead of insert coin obviously you hit this button so okay. you get as much credits as you want okay. exactly. okay. and then the player two can come in by pressing this and you you start in okay so for example in Tekken you'll see a new challenger has entered or something or exactly exactly, exactly. okay all right fair enough 
Um, and I've tried out these controls, guys. I'm gonna be showing you some footage of me trying my best to play the game. Or maybe we'll let Kyle do that, we'll still see. Uh, but they do feel amazing. They feel like the good old, solidly built. Yes, yes. <laughs> so controllers. so yeah. everything is really heavy duty, even the wood that we used. So I, we tried to use the best materials possible. Okay. Oh, so this is wood? Yes, yes. Oh, cool. In fact, it's okay. very... It, it it's shows substantial. that it's... It's yeah. substantial, yeah, okay. That's really, really good. Now, what about uh, what games does it? I mean, what can you play on it? What yes, kind of basically, games? you have ten thousand games. Ten thousand. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the, all the games from the seventies, eighties, nineties, and early two thousands, up to the PlayStation One, Tekken Three. You know, so. Oh, okay. So it's not only retro. No, games. no. It's no. even well. I mean, so the there's Pong, one, there's, there's Pong, Pong. Okay. you start from Pong, then there's the Space Invaders, there is Metal Slug, Street Fighter, there's oh. all of the good ones. Oh, wow. you know? Okay, <laughs> Okay. so I'll show you more, you guys more about the software that it runs. Um, um, what about sound? How's the, how's the sound configuration here, yes. basically? Sound, there's a 2.1 surround system, so okay. if you go down here, you can see immediately that it has very good sound and mm -hmm. bass. So it has good bass, and there's also a um, jack, so if you want you can do a jack connector. So there's a headphone jack for the quiet late night game. Yes, like, okay, yes, yes. that would be really useful. <laughs> <laughs> Alright man, so I'm uh, gonna take this out for a spin, see how it feels, see how it plays, and I'll come back with my thoughts in just a while. So guys, let's see what kind of games we can play on the Kate box. So I'm gonna cycle through the list of games here. So we have the Microsoft MSX, Atari 7800, Atari 2600, I actually had one of these as a kid, so I'll be sure to try out some games from here. We have the Wonderswan, which I've never played this, okay. Uh, Neo Geo Pocket, PC Engine, which is amazing, you don't see that every day. The Sega Mega Drive, of course. The Sega Mark III, the Sega SG-1000, and then we have some game and watch feature here, we'll explore that. The Super Famicom, which is the Japanese name for the SNES. Okay, so probably there are some Japanese games in here as well. Uh, we have the family computer disk system. We have a Nintendo, the Nintendo DS. You can actually play Nintendo DS games on here. We have Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Nintendo 64, so the big names coming up right now. Sega Naomi Dreamcast, which is amazing. The PlayStation, the original PlayStation 1. The Neo Geo, Super Graphics, Turbo Graphics. Uh, the SNES, of course, the uh, European and American version. The Sega Game Gear, the Mega Drive, the Mega CD, the Sega Master System. And as you can see, this menu is not just a list of the uh, platforms as you see on typical homebrew emulators. I mean, you have beautiful graphics, preview of the games you have. I mean, this is really, really well polished. We have the original Game Boy, the original NES, arcade games from those custom arcade cabinets you'd see in the 80s. And we're back here to the setting screen. So whatever uh, arcade you favored back in the day, there's probably something for you in here. Okay, so we're gonna play a game of Space Invaders here. So after the game loads, I'll just press this button and then this button to say single player. And we can press this button to begin. And here we are playing a classic game of Space Invaders. And instantly I can see that the feeling is totally different from playing it on an emulator at home. This feels much more exciting and I'm actually moving my body even though that has no effect at all on the game. Uh, so there is a sense of panic here as I try not to get obliterated uh, uh, just like that. Um, uh, okay, uh, that's the second life. Okay, so one thing that you need to remember guys is that many arcade games, uh, especially the arcade games you find in cabinets back in the day, were actually designed to be really difficult. The whole point, as you can see, was to make you spend as many quarters as possible whilst you're playing. And in fact, Space Invaders famously starts getting faster 
as the aliens whoo, as the aliens get closer or maybe that's just my impression and uh, yeah I am totally dead and suck but that's me the box itself is amazing it really feels much more natural uh, to play these types of games on this type of machine and it's clear that they were designed uh, with this type of setup in mind let's play something else okay so let's uh, move forward in time a bit and go to Super Mario Brothers uh, so we're gonna launch it here so this is the original Super Mario 1 essentially and so we'll do a one player game here and here we go okay so let's figure out okay so that jumps let's see how this goes now uh, you can see oh. let's try that again okay I forgot about the sliding uh, now you can see here that the uh, boxes are actually 25th anniversary edition so they contain a 25 we get that mushroom there okay now in terms of input lag it's really really good I mean I press the joystick and pretty much instantly uh, the movement begins okay so even jumping uh, actually no that's that there is absolutely zero discernible input lag guys so this is something that's very 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 rare whenever you're emulating a system especially these types of systems with weird frame rates and so on it's very very common that when you press the button it takes a, a few milliseconds for there to be a response from the system but not here uh, you press the button and something instantly happens okay so now I can shoot these oh yes now I'm getting into the groove and that's probably famous last words. Ooh, I'm alive. All right. Eat flower petal thingies. Okay, all right. And, oh, am I gonna manage to do this? Oh, no, no I am not. I suck. Um, but of course, again, I should actually start from a checkpoint. Yeah, there we go. So actually, now that I'm starting from a checkpoint, let me get the camera closer so you can see what the game actually looks like. Okay, so here's the more close-up view, okay? Um, so again, as I was saying, the input lag is fantastically non-existent. Uh, my, just like my skills are non-existent at playing Super Mario. But that's okay. I'm not gonna be using any quarters and I'll just play again. So, uh, it definitely works out to be less frustrating than the original arcade experience. So anyway, guys, um, the joysticks feel really good. Uh, in fact, I used to visit an arcade uh, locally um, when, I, when we used to go to the movies and go to an arcade afterwards. It was basically our Saturday afternoon ritual, in my family at least. Uh, it was also a ritual for me to suck at playing these games, especially when you're trying to play record and talk at the same time but anyway uh, as you can see here as well this particular machine uh, has the original aspect ratio that you would get on the vast majority of arcade cabinets of the time this means that it's a one is to one representation and there's no weird artifacting or scaling and stuff like that even though of course this is uh, this was also later available in, in on the SNES okay so let me just uh, show you some gameplay now and shut up You can actually feel some vibrations in your hands when you're pressing the buttons okay so the sound capabilities of this machine are really quite something you can pretty much feel it and we've got it set to a very 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 low volume here just so you can hear my annoying voice explaining what's going on so <laughs> this can definitely annoy the neighbors if you really want to Okay, okay. so let me just keep going here. I really, really want to finish at least one level because otherwise the whole internet is gonna think that I really, really suck. Uh, okay. Uh, how long is this level? Okay, here we are. Oh, redemption at last. I actually managed to finish a level on one of these games. So one really cool feature of the Kate box is that you have this all games section. Uh, so when we go in here, 
you can basically see um, a list of all of the games on the device, all 10,000 of them. Now, if that sounds daunting to go through, uh, you can also browse the games by category. So as you can see here, there's category of games, like action, adventure, beat em up, and so on. And this is games regardless of the platform. Okay, so I can, for example, go into, I don't know, driving games, and this will show me all of the driving games on the system for the Game Boy, for the PlayStation, for the Atari, regardless of the platform that they're on. And there's also collections here. So if we scroll down, you can see that there are, for example, the classics by platform, Atari classics, Capcom classics, obviously something like Nintendo classics there, and so on. And you can even browse by game franchise. Okay, so you'll see there that, for example, there is the Donkey Kong collection, um, and you have every single game in here that has ever been released that has Donkey Kong inside it. Now, I did see a Metal Slug collection, so let's go ahead in there and let's play a little, uh, I don't know, Metal Slug 4. Yeah, why not? So this is a bit of a more modern game and we'll see how it handles the graphics. So I'm going to step into the controller here. And here we are. So we have our controls here. Let's choose our player here. Marco sounds cool. And here we are, a metal slug. Okay, so that's jumping. Oh crap. What just happened? I think I died. No, okay. All right. Oh, <laughs> grenade right in the face. So guys, I'm actually having so much fun here that I'm forgetting that I'm actually needing to make a video. Uh, I just want to play the game now. I got knifed by that guy. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Now, you can even play more recent titles on the Kate box. So here we're playing Crash Bandicoot uh, from the PS1. There we go. So let's see how a PlayStation 1 game performs here. Now, the last time I played this was on, the, was on an emulator on PC. And I remember this game being so frustrating that I almost destroyed my PC. I'll try not to destroy the gate box, although I don't think I could if I tried. So, okay, all right, that's easy to get the hang of. Uh, okay. Oops. I turned when I should have jumped. No, no. So 
So performance wise, this is running pretty much identically to as well as it was run on a PlayStation. Now, left or right? Right. Oh god. So, let's now try some two-player gaming and we'll see Kyle kick my ass. Okay, so, performance-wise, it's great. Let's see how my performance will be now. To be fair, I'm cheating here, I chose Eddie. <laughs> Although you're still gonna kill me. No, I, I, of course. See, as soon as I get cocky, he destroys me. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay, I'm wrong. And humiliatingly, I am, of course, <laughs> defeated. Okay, so we're playing a two-player puzzle bubble now. Yes, okay. Okay, okay. So, this is... Hmm. It's been a very long time since I actually played the game next to someone, especially since the pandemic. <laughs> Again? <laughs> and Kyle continues to destroy me utterly. <laughs> And uh, after yet another humiliating defeat, I think you get the point. I have had a ton of fun playing with the gate box. In fact, at some point I forgot I was making a video and just got into the game. It's a totally different experience from playing on an emulator, on a PC. Uh, the controls are very responsive and the feedback is fantastic. The thing looks beautiful. Uh, there's 10,323 games or yes. something like oh, that. Okay. Uh, technically, it has a 2.1 surround sound system, so you have a, uh, two speakers here and a subwoofer there at the bottom to hit the floor. And it's based on Linux with Raspberry Pi. Uh, yeah, the Retro Pi. The Retro Pi version 3.1 something, exactly. Um, so, original aspect ratio, a great display, and makes games of any platform look good. And, and people can customize this when they buy it, right? Yes, yes, you certainly can. So we chose gold just because of our apartment. We wanted to blend in, we wanted it to blend in really good with our, with our style. However, um, this part that goes, this vinyl is totally customizable. 
Um, uh, companies, for example, for example, can add their branding colors. Oh, okay. Can add their logo as well. All right. If they have some special graphic that they need, you can add it. Um, okay, so that's really cool. Yeah. And um, how much does it cost? It costs two nine nine nine. That's euros. Yeah, euros. Um, with uh, free installation, there is also um, uh, uh, a demo that we do on site. So once you buy it, we'll come there, we'll show you how, how it's done, give you some instructions and then let you have fun. Um, and at the moment we're selling it at 2450 euros with um, a discount. So it's an introductory offer, also a back to office offer. offer so. We've got a lot of um, quote requests from from uh, um, different companies already, so for sure it's going Fantastic. to make a hit there. Um, uh, and yeah, so for now it's two four five zero. Okay, so people can obviously the demo and free installation applies to Malta right now. Yes, exactly. Uh, people in the EU can buy it because it does ship in the yeah. EU. Yeah, you can also buy it outside the EU, but obviously there's going to be the extra import. Shipping charges and the extra exit. Okay, and how do people actually buy the thing? Um, so we're gonna have, currently if you go to www.kbox.com you're going to see a landing page. So we're currently still doing our website and um, it will be available soon and you will be able to purchase it from there. But for the time being, there's a WhatsApp button on the website okay. where you can hit that and you'll be speaking directly with myself. Okay, so. If you want one of these beautiful machines, make sure to go to katebox.com, hit on hit that WhatsApp button, speak to my friend Kyle here, and get your very own. I hope you enjoyed my review of Katebox. Uh, check out their project's website, which will be up and running soon. You can also get more information about Katebox on Facebook. And if you like it enough, why not order one yourself? It really is a fantastic machine, as you saw from the hands-on demo. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you did, be sure to like and subscribe to keep yourself up to date with what's going on in the world of technology and hit that bell notification icon to be notified when I release a new video. I hope you enjoyed this video and until the next one, thanks for watching. Here, press a button to fire the sun and the gun. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> the blooper. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right.